Hello there, uh, this is Aisha. I am a program associate in fiscal sponsorship at Fractured Atlas. Uh, we are going to get started momentarily. I just want to make sure um, first that everyone can hear me. So if you can hear me, just type yes in the little box there um, so that we can get started. Wonderful, great, great, great. Beautiful. Um, and the other thing I want to check really quickly is to make sure you can see the screen that's up there. It says Fiscal Sponsorship Orientation for New Projects. Um, you'll see my name there. If you can see that, also type yes in there that you can see the presentation. Oh, great. Wonderful. So, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, my name is Aisha Jordan. I am the Program Associate in Fiscal Sponsorship at Fractured Atlas. Um, and welcome to the Fiscal Sponsorship Orientation for New Projects webinar. If you are a recently accepted project, welcome. If you're just learning about kind of how our programs work, welcome as well. Um, we're going to go into some of the intricacies of our fiscal sponsorship program um, so that you can get started with all of your fundraising needs through us. Um, and also, this is being recorded, so don't feel like you have to jot down quick notes. I am going to kind of breeze through it, but um, this will be recorded and you will receive a recording of it in an email um, either later this week or beginning of next week, um, so look out for that. Uh, and then there will be a section at the end for questions. So if you have any burning questions while I'm going through, feel free to type them in. Um, but there will be a section open up for questions at the end of the presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, one of the things we like to mention first is a little bit about Fractured Atlas, okay? So over the past 12 months, our fiscally sponsored projects have raised a current $18,984,469. Um, and that's with our fiscal sponsored program over the last 12 months. And we have fiscally sponsored 3,926 um, projects. And we have run this program all with the help of eight staff members. So that's a little bit about us. Uh, and as we go through, we're able to run the largest fiscal sponsorship program um, for artists in the country with a lean staff of eight individuals um, and only a few of them dedicated full time to this specific project um, program. And this is kind of our dream team. So right there at the top, I highlighted in red, that's me, Aisha. And then if you see over to the left of me, that is Nathan Zabidio. Um, he is a program specialist in fiscal sponsorship. Below him, you'll see Diane DiBasella. She is our Senior Program Director of Fiscal Sponsorship. Um, and below her, you'll see there is Teresa Hubbard. She is our uh, Program Specialist in Fiscal Sponsorship. Next to her, there you'll see Courtney Hard. She is our Member Advisor. And there next to her, you'll see Lauren Lattimore, a Program Associate as well in Fiscal Sponsorship. Above her there, you see Katarina Thompson. She's our member associate. And above her there, Sabrina Sedeno, who is also our member associate. And that is our uh, fabulous team there. So moving forward, uh, the way we're able to run a program of this size so smoothly and efficiently is that we have custom built online tools that make up a large portion of the program um, makes it automated. And there's a great deal of functionality at your fingertips that allows you to control a large portion of your fundraising activities. And today's uh, presentation is going to show you a path forward with our fiscal sponsorship program by giving you a tour of what's available for you on our website and outline some of our program policies and procedures. So again, this is being recorded. So if you have any um, notes you want to take, you can, but you will receive this. So next up, uh, once your uh, project has been approved for fiscal sponsorship, you will receive a My Fiscal Sponsorship page in your login. Now, this page allows you to do a lot of the different things that our fiscal sponsorship program um, offers. And I'm going to talk through some of the features, um, and they are also available in your program manual, which you may have received upon acceptance. 
Um, and again, there's no substitute for hands-on learning. And we can't possibly cover everything in this presentation. So I do encourage you to explore this My Fiscal Sponsorship page on our website. Read through the manual. Um, it's about 35 pages um, as your first steps to, to starting sponsorship with us. So one of the first things to understand about our fiscal sponsorship program is that we make the distinction between earned uh, revenue and contributed revenue. So earned revenue would be anything such as ticket sales or if you um, sell a book or if you uh, conduct classes in which you receive funds for. Um, this is all considered earned revenue and go directly to you as the sponsored project. We deal with contributed revenue. So contributed revenue would be anything such as grants, um, funds from individual donors, corporate sponsorship, non-cash gifts, anything that is given um, to your project without the expectation of something in return. And we'll go in a little bit more of the intricacies of that in a little bit. Uh, and one of the things I do want to mention is that we do accept um, projects that do have investors. Um, and what we have you do is we have you sign a separate addendum that kind of dictates the relationship between us as your fiscal sponsors and your investors. Um, and if anyone has more questions about that, you can send us an email at support at fracturedatlas.org. All right, so uh, we can help you process your donations, so that contributed revenue, in three different ways. We can do it by debit or credit card on our website or on a crowdfunding campaign with Indiegogo that's been linked to your fiscally sponsored project. We can do donations by check that are made out to Fractured Atlas. And then we can also do non-cash donations or in-kind donations that are made um, to Fractured Atlas for the purposes of your project. And again, we'll go into a little more detail about these in a minute. So um, each fiscally sponsored project will receive, as I mentioned before, um, uh, my fiscal sponsorship page or your donor, also a donor landing page. So this is your donor landing page and this is the space that all of your donors will be able to donate to your fiscally sponsored project through debit or credit card in the amounts of $20,000 per transaction. So that doesn't mean they can't donate more than $20,000. It's just that each time they can do, donate $20,000 per transaction. So if they wanted to donate $40,000, they would have to um, donate $20,000 and then do another transaction for 20,000. Um, and we do ask that donors wait a little bit before doing so because credit cards can shut off um, due to uh, fraud. So if you wait a little bit, you're, you're able to continue that without any interruptions. Uh, so yeah, this page also allows you to provide a picture um, or a video. It allows you to have a description underneath and up there at the top, you'll see the name of your project always present um, for your donors to see. So as I mentioned a second ago, um, this is your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. So this is what you would see on your end when you log in. And that page that you just viewed, the donor landing page, you can edit yourself by going onto that My Fiscal Sponsorship page and clicking right there where you see the green arrow says Current Profile. You click Online Profile, click Current Profile, and there you can edit the description, you can edit the video or image, um, and anything like that. Uh, please note that any edits to the description are subject to Fractured Atlas staff approval. So once you make the submission, we get alerted, we review it and approve it um, within one to two business days, and then you'll see it posted um, during that time. If we do have any questions about any of your edits, we will contact you through email. All right, so we can also accept check donations that are made payable to Fractured Atlas. Now you're welcome to have your donors write your name or the name of your sponsored project in the memo line, but it isn't necessarily um, needed because we ask that your donors mail the contribution directly to you first, and I'll explain why. So we have them mail it to you directly because we will need that check to be reported on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page under the Donations tab before that check comes to us for processing. So you'll see right there again on that My Fiscal Sponsorship page, checks, report, um, and then you would send that into us after the fact. So this is what the donation report page actually looks like. You're going to uh, select whether it's an existing donor that has given to you before, the type of donor is, their name and information, everything of that sort. And you'll also be asked to put in the amount of the donation and the check number. 
Um, this way, once it arrives, we are completely aware that the check is made directly for the purposes of your project and we can process it accordingly in our system. Um, and you'll be surprised how many unreported checks that arrive at our office and we end up spending a lot of time trying to figure out who the check actually goes to and there is occasion where we will send it back to you if it is not reported online ahead of time. All right, so we can also accept check donations of any size, but uh, those of $1,000 or more require kind of an extra piece of documentation called the major gift letter. So this is what the major gift letter looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is something that your donor would fill out with the amount given to your project. Um, your project name is right there. They'll sign, print clearly their name and address, and then they can either send it directly to you with the check or send it to us so that we can process it with the check donation. Um, and this is important because what we need um, for us to maintain our regulations for our Platform 1C3 is that we need to see that there's donative intent. Now, donative intent kind of shows exactly that the donor has decided to give funds to Fractured Atlas and have asked that these funds be used specifically for your project. That way, we're upholding to our mission and the mission that we um, set out to uh, do as a charitable 501c3 and making sure that these funds are properly going where they need to go. The reason that you don't need this for a credit card uh, donation is because we see it as donative intent in which the donor is actually entering their information and clicking submit directly on your donor landing page and this is enough for our auditors and for our records to show that donative intent. All right, so there are a few things that we actually cannot accept when it comes to donations through Fractured Atlas. And one of those things is cash donations. So cash donations, because we can't see again that donative intent, that funds go directly to um, you as a project uh, rather than coming into us. Uh, so if you do receive cash donations, it's totally fine. It would just need to go directly to you um, and that way you can be able to take that donation. Just they would not be able to receive a uh, tax receipt or a tax deduction for that donation. And many times anyone who is giving cash is usually giving a smaller amount who might not be so worried about the tax deduction. Uh, someone is asking if there is a fee taken out on credit card donations. Um, we will get into it in a little bit, but yes, there is a 7% fee taken out on all donations that come into Fractured Atlas for the purposes of your project. That is our administrative fee, so it covers uh, running this program through Fractured Atlas, as well as any credit card processing fees. So you don't have to worry about any extra charges such as that. It's all covered in the 7% fee. Um, and again, we'll get into that in a little bit. So uh, one of the other donations that we cannot accept um, is money orders. So again, that has to do with the donative intent as well. Money orders, there's no way to trace it back to who uh, donated, and that way it's very difficult for us to be able to issue tax receipts and follow up with our um, regulations as a 501c3, not knowing that donative intent. All right, so we can, however, help you accept non-cash or in-kind donations as well. Now, these donations have to be something physical or tangible items that exist in the real world and that you can touch something with your hands, and that of which the ownership is fully donated over to you as a, as a project. So let's talk about that a little bit further. So we can only process donations that are physical, so things that would exist here meaning we wouldn't be able to accept donations of time. So anytime someone wants to volunteer their time or they want to give you um, a free massage session, they're donating a massage time or things like that, we actually cannot accept it as non-cash donations. It isn't something the IRS is able to um, show the, the charitable contribution. So that isn't something that we um, can accept on behalf of your project. And you're free to have, you know, people do these services for you, but we would not be able to issue tax receipts, things like that. And the other one is of space. So we can't accept an issue of space because it is something that isn't, again, tangible, isn't something that we can show of which the full ownership has been given over to you. So unless they're giving you the entire dance studio, um, we aren't able to uh, take it on as a non-cash donation. And the other one is of airlines, um, airlines and flyer miles. 
So the way that that kind of works is that flyer miles are not considered a charitable um, contribution to the IRS uh, because they are not physical and don't necessarily have a taxable uh, amount that they can write off. Um, and then also for the actual plane tickets, it would have to be someone who is a part of the actual 501c3 who is traveling. So unless you want to get me a ticket to the Bahamas, then you wouldn't be able to accept it. But you are, you know, if you want, you want to take me on vacation, that's fine. <laughs> All right. So um, the way that we actually accept non-cash donations is very similar to the check um, donations that come in. You would go online to my fiscal sponsorship page. You're going to click the mon non-monetary property uh, section under donations and report. So you have to report the non-cash donation online using the non-cash donation letter. Um, and that's kind of how we process this donation for you. So this is what the non-cash donation letter looks like. And again, you can access that on your my fiscal sponsorship page right there um, in the section that was just highlighted. So your donor would need to fill this out, letting us know the estimated value of the goods that they're providing, um, the date, their signature, name and address, um, very similar to the check donation. You can upload this with the report online when you go to your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, just upload this letter and we'll receive it all at once and be able to process it once we receive it. Um, and any donations of $250 or more, we do need a photograph of the donated items. Now, this gets uh, hairy when people get uh, donations of food or alcohol. So it's very important that you take this picture before the alcohol or food is consumed. <laughs> so a lot of times people say, oh, they donated um, 10 bags of chips for our meeting. Uh, but at that time, we're not able to uh, see that you donated that they donated that because chips were eaten. So make sure that you take a picture of any alcohol or food before it's consumed, and then you can upload that along with this uh, letter in the report. So the report here looks just like this. So right there, you describe the item um, that the item is received. So it's very important that you let us know the item is received. We cannot process it until you have it in your ownership, that you actually have the item with you. Um, the value, everything, any comments that you want to put at the bottom. Um, and the very important thing there, you'll see administrative fee. Uh, the important thing to know is that we do take the 7% administrative fee out of non-cash donations as well. So this can either be charged to the credit card that we'd have on file for you or taken out of your fund balance. And right there at the bottom, you can decide which way that that would happen. Uh, so one of the other things, and I'm sure we'll have more questions about that in a minute. Um, so again, as we mentioned before with that same question, um, we do process all these donations and 7% does come out of every donation that comes in. Now, this isn't something that you're paying or that the donor is paying, although they do have that option. Um, it just comes out directly from the donation when it comes in. Um, so when you see your available fund balance, it will be there um, minus the fee that has already been assessed. So there are advantages to raising money through us. Um, more and more money. If you raise $150,000 or more over the lifetime of your fiscal sponsorship, that administrative fee on check donations goes down to 6%. At $500,000 or more, it gets reduced to 5%. And if you raise $1 million or more, the fee goes down to 4%. And yes, we have had projects raise a $1 million or more over the lifetime of being fiscally sponsored. Um, and this is specifically on check donations um, because it's the only uh, percentage that we can actually control on our end. With credit card donations and debit card donations, the credit card processing fee doesn't change, so that stays at 7%. So um, only on the check donations does it get um, reduced. All right. So uh, you can always check your available fund balance on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. So you see right there, you log in, click Info and Reports. It'll show you your fund balance, and it shows you available. So the important thing about that is that all donations are held for seven days in your fund balance before they are available to you to release um, for your project's expenses. And we are going to detail about that moving forward about fund releases. 
And what you'll see in the fund balance is you'll see that amount, that is actually minus the fees coming out. So that $9.30 there, that we've already assessed the 7% fee, and that is what is available in your fund balance. All right, so before we move forward, it's very important to slow down a little bit. And before you start talking about processing, do processing donations, how does anyone actually get a donation? How do we actually <laughs> receive or solicit these donations? We ask. So this is often the first hurdle that many um, arts entrepreneurs and businesses encounter. And every day we talk to artists or art startups who are experiencing initial um, uneasiness about actually asking people for money. So we encourage our fiscally sponsored projects to consider themselves in good company. Now, all nonprofit artistic ventures in the United States require philanthropic support to keep in operation. So that goes for places like the Met Opera, the Getty Museum in LA, all of them are asking for funds. Now, what we ask, what we suggest is you don't consider it a form of begging, more consider it an offer. So you're offering potential patrons an opportunity to get involved with something bigger than themselves. And with fiscal sponsorship, you're even offering them that added tax deductibility as well. So as soon as you're approved for fiscal sponsorship, we do recommend that you start sending out appeals, asking people to make contributions and letting them know that their donation is now tax deductible. Um, and some different ideas are an email blast or a snail mail campaign. Snail mail works pretty well these days. Everyone is kind of inundated with emails and such, and receiving a letter can sometimes be that thing that changes the game. Um, a newsletter, you can put it on your website, host a fundraising event, or run a crowdfunding campaign. And all of them you should consider at some point as part of your larger fundraising strategy. So uh, we do have on your My Fiscal Sponsorship page access to certain templates that could assist you when you're putting together your fundraising um, strategy. So we have individual appeal letter templates, um, among other fundraising templates that are available to take look, for you to take a look at. So now crafting a good letter is definitely more than just plugging in your information into a formula and pressing send. So we strongly encourage that you use this template as just a way to start your brainstorming off. Um, before you um, actually sending it out to your uh, potential donors. Make sure that you're kind of putting it in your voice and catering it to those, uh, to your constituents that, you, that you're speaking with. So before you actually send out any appeals to potential donors, we ask that you actually send a copy to Fractured Atlas at support at fracturedatlas.org first so that we may review and approve before it goes out. So basically a good rule of thumb is that any time you mention Fractured Atlas or promise patrons tax deductibility, that you send it to us first. Um, we require this just for a few reasons. And one of those reasons is it's in your best, best interest to have another pair of eyes take a look at what you're about to send out. Um, and at this point, you know, I'm sure we've reviewed about hundreds of donor solicitations at least and have a pretty good idea of what successful and well-presented appeal letter looks like. So we can offer you some tips and tools to potentially maximize the effectiveness of your fundraising materials and we'll definitely provide feedback where appropriate. Um, but we're also looking to see that you correctly presenting the fiscal sponsorship arrangement uh, between ourselves and your uh, fiscally sponsored project. So one of the things we ask is we ask for the standard text now this is an example of the standard text that we require on all of our solicitation materials. And it's a very you know brief paragraph that kind of lets your donors know exactly how it works that your sponsored project of Fractured Atlas contributions are made to us for the purposes of your project and are tax, tax deductible to the extent permitted by the law. Now um, it's very quick and it's perfectly fine for you to include it at the bottom as fine print or anything like that. Um, but it does need to be included verbatim as it is on the My Fiscal Sponsorship page. Um, you'll see under Program Guidelines, you can click on there and see um, the different standard texts we have. And we have several different kinds uh, for partially tax deductible, and we'll go into that in a second, uh, for grants and for fully tax deductible as well. Um, and this should be put on anywhere you're mentioning Fractured Atlas or tax deductibility. So this includes your website, if you only have a Facebook, on your Facebook, um, and all uh, e-blasts, things like that. And again, we do like to review these things before they go live or that they're um, sent out. 
So one of the other things that we're looking for is what you might be offering your donors in exchange for your contribution. Uh, for example, advertising space. Advertising space isn't something that the IRS considers a charitable contribution, and it wouldn't be something that could be tax deductible for your donors. So it gets a little hairy because there's a difference between advertising and kind of appreciation. So you'll see, um, for instance, if you had a movie and you received funds from Pontiac, to, to put on your movie. If Pontiac said, okay, now you have to use Pontiac cars in every single one of your scenes, that would be considered advertising and wouldn't be something charitable. So we wouldn't be able to accept that Pontiac's donation. It would be more of them selling ads or you selling them ad space. Um, if, let's say, Pontiac gave you a lot of money for your film and in the credits you put, thanks to Pontiac, that's totally fine. You're showing appreciation for the funds that were given um, and such. And if you ended up using a Pontiac car in your movie, it'd be fine as long as it wasn't stipulated that you had to, that you just did it in appreciation. Yes, we, we used Pontiac because, hey, they gave us money and we appreciate that. Um, and if you ever have any questions about whether you can or cannot use something, whether it's ad advertising or if it's corporate sponsorship, um, go ahead and send us an email at support at fractured.org um, and then we can let you know, you know, if it is acceptable or if it's something that we wouldn't be able to accept. So the other thing that we're looking for is if you're running a raffle. Now, raffles are actually considered a form of gambling. And the rules around gambling are actually regulated at the state level. And because we are a national company, it's not something that we can actually... Um, Process. So we are not able to hold up or provide oversight of all the regulations in each state. So therefore, we are not we cannot be associated with any raffle. Again, you're able to do all these things outside of your fiscal sponsorship with us, um, but they cannot funds for raffles cannot come into Fractured Atlas um, for the purposes of your project. Hey, right. um, <clears throat> so as I mentioned a little bit ago, I, I said partially tax deductible. Um, so whenever you're offering donors rewards or goods and services in exchange for their contribution, this makes their donation partially tax deductible. And the amount that's above and above, above and beyond the fair market value of the items they're receiving is tax deductible for your donors. So for example, let's say you're running a crowdfunding campaign and you're giving away tote bags and the worth of the tote bags is $10, but the uh, donor level is $50. So that would mean only $40 of that donation is tax deductible for your donors. Um, and, this, and there's many ways that we can actually still conduct this and you're able to provide appreciation um, to your donors uh, using these different items. So one of the biggest times that it comes up is crowdfunding. So if anyone has seen a crowdfunding campaign out there, and there's many sites and, and um, platforms, and they all offer some sort of perks or some sort of giving level where you can offer items to your donors in exchange for their gifts. Um, and that's kind of where partial deductibility really comes out. So one of our partnerships that we have is with Indiegogo. So many people may have heard of Indiegogo and their crowdfunding platform. Um, it's a very prevalent platform for artists and other types of uh, fundraisers uh, looking to gain funds. So um, with your partnership with Indiegogo, they can make uh, tax deductible donations directly to your Indiegogo that come into Fractured Atlas. Um, and we'll show you how to kind of get that set up in a minute. So this is kind of an example of what a um, crowdfunding campaign with Indiegogo might look like. They've since updated their site a little bit, so it's a little, a little different, but um, it does look something like this. And you'll see we ask that the standard text be on your crowdfunding campaign as well. You can see the perks there. Um, if you look in that $10 one, it says USD postcard. About over $1 is tax deductible. So there is a section in the perks where you would be able to put in the non-deductible amount of the actual donation. Um, and that's what's required if you are offering goods and services. So this is kind of how you set up a Indiegogo campaign already connected to your physically sponsored project with us. 
you would go ahead to your My Fiscal Spot login, go to your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, click Accessorize, and underneath there where you see the aerial, click Indiegogo, and then it'll take you through several steps to set up your Indiegogo campaign linked to your fiscally sponsored project. So the other thing that you can do outside of running a crowdfunding campaign, um, if you want, you can offer giving levels to your donors on an ongoing basis. So again, with Indiegogo, um, you do have an end date, you do have a specific goal, and once you make it, um, Indiegogo does offer an in-demand section in which you can continue fundraising, which we don't ask our fiscally sponsored projects to do. This is because you are actually able to accept donations at any time all year round on your donor landing page with us. So um, you can actually end your campaign and have them continue donating on your donor landing page with us at any time. Um, and again, you can set up giving levels, which allows you to have the same certain perks you might have on an Indiegogo directly on your donor landing page with Fractured Atlas. And one of the most important things to note is also that with Indiegogo crowdfunding campaigns and fiscally sponsored projects, we do assess our 7% administrative fee. Indiegogo takes an additional 3% for processing as well. So it's a total of 10% coming out of your donations going through Indiegogo. So this is kind of what, if you were to set up giving levels specifically on your landing page, this is what they would look like. You could have um, your amount right up there, the description of what they might receive in return, and it will also let them know um, upon checkout the non-deductible amount of what it is they're uh, receiving or what they're giving. Um, and every donor is actually given the option to give to one of your donor levels, even on your regular My Fiscal uh, on your regular donor landing page, if they click donate now, we, it does pop up and say, consider um, donating to a giving level. And they can donate to a giving level if they desire, or they can continue and donate as much as they like. So uh, the next thing that we, we um, like to talk about is applying for grants. Um, so Fiscal sponsorship can open the door to institutional funding um, from places like foundations or corporations. And as with approvals of your individual solicitations and crowdfunding campaigns, we want to be involved when you apply for grants from these sources as well. Um, so before you even start looking at grants, uh, once you're fiscally sponsored by us, we do ask we do have an eligibility requirement when seeking grants, and we ask that all fiscally sponsored projects have raised $1,000 before seeking grant funding. Um, and if you have raised $1,000 in the past for your specific project, you can send us proof of this. This could be PayPal transactions, it could be a link to an old crowdfunding campaign that you conducted, or an award letter from an individual um, grant that you actually received. Um, and then we can waive this, this requirement and you would be able to start seeking grant funding right away. But um, outside of that, you can get physically sponsored right away, maybe start your individual appeal uh, campaign, get $1,000, and then you'd be able to start applying for grants through Fractured Atlas. So um, one of the important things is that we do ask all grant materials to be sent to support at fracturedatlas.org at least 10 business days before the due date of the grant. This allows us to review the grant, provide any feedback, and allows time for any back and forth that might happen in terms of edits that are necessary for the grant submission, um, and then allows time for approval and for us to actually assemble any necessary documents that the funder might be needing from Fractured Atlas. But it's also great um, because we are able to review the grant and provide um, any kind of uh, feedback or anything like that that uh, might make your grant a little bit stronger. Again, we review grants on a daily basis and have a pretty good idea, and we're very familiar with different various funders um, and can give you really detailed information about what the funder might be looking for um, and how to make your grant as successful as possible. And the other part is... Uh, we also keep track 
of the grant, the award payments, any contracts, and any reporting requirements that the grantor might have. So as soon as your application goes in, let's say you receive the award, we process that payment. And if it comes in multiple installments, we process those as well. We sign any contracts that might need to be signed by your fiscal sponsor. And some grants do require a reporting a year or once the um, activities uh, completed and we make sure that those are getting sent in and we are putting any information on our end if necessary. So, okay, so now you've successfully solicited donations, you've received grants, you've done great. So what next? How do you access these funds that are in your fund balance? So the first thing you would need to do, and many of you may have done this when applying, is you need to set up the EFT, the Electronic Funds Transfer. And you can do this if you haven't done it directly through your application online, you can do it through your My Fiscal Sponsorship page. So you would log in, you click Fund Releases, and there at the bottom you'll see Sign Up for Electronic Bank Transfer. You'd click on that, and then what you would see is this form here. Now, what we would need you to fill out um, is if which program you're setting the EFT up for, make sure that you check that off, the name of the project that's fiscally sponsored, and then all of your banking information. And then this would need to be returned to support at fracturedatlas.org or mailed to us by mail or faxed in um, to 212-277-8025, along with a voided check. Now, the voided check must be complete with the account number, routing number, and also an address printed on the check. Um, and if you don't have checks, because I know we're all kind of moving into this digital age, which is wonderful, um, you can send us a letter from the bank just stating the routing number, account number, and the address of the account holder um, and the name on the, on the bank account. And then that would suffice. Um, or a bank statement could also be sent as well. Um, but once we receive this, we'll set up the electronic bank transfer and any funds that have been donated to you that you would like to be released would be released to that bank account. Um, and it can be any bank account. It doesn't actually have to be a business bank account. Um, we do ask that you open a separate bank account from your personal bank account just to keep the funds that are for your company separate from your personal funds. But it can just be another personal checking. It doesn't have to be a business checking account but it does need to be a checking account. We cannot set up two savings accounts. Um, so once that's all set up and you have confirmation funds that your bank account is, ready, is all set up, you would then be able to request funds. So you, you log in, go to your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, click Fund Releases, and you would click Request Funds. This would take you directly to our Fund Release Request form in which you could let us know a little bit more about what you are releasing these funds for. So when you submit a Fund Release Request, um, you would let us know how much money and what you'll be spending this money on. So we have several different expense categories that you can choose from um, when making your fund release. So let's say you had $1,000 for public creations and $500 is for space rental. Um, you can actually click both in one session. So if you clicked public relations and then you put in the amount, you can also click on that drop down again click space rental, put that amount in. So all in one request, you can you can request um, several different line items in one fund release request. Um, there is an other expense category, but just so you know, we almost never let anyone use the other as an explanation for an expense because it's almost 100% of the time your expense does fit into one of the categories provided. Um, and if you do choose other, there is a chance it may slow down your fund release because we may need to get in contact with you to figure out exactly what these funds are being used for. Um, most of the time, the only time you can use the other category is if you are doing, if you yourself are applying for like an LLC and there's a fee with it. That kind of is the only thing that really uh, goes into the other category. Um, so, yeah. Um, and again, you can use these funds for anything that is project related. Um, so even paying yourself, you can pay yourself a fee for the time you have. And we actually encourage people to do that, um, paying themselves. The other thing is we're not able to give funds to other entities. So let's say you were like, I really want to pay this person who gave me money. Um, could you just send the money to them? Unfortunately, no. All the funds would need to go directly to the bank account that's on file with us. Um, and is connected specifically to the legal entity that's on file. And we'll go into that in just a minute. 
So um, one of the things that we ask for particularly large fund release requests, we do ask for documentation. Now documentation can be receipts, contracts, invoices, quotes, and a lot of people often get tripped up because they say, how can I give you documentation if I haven't spent the money yet? So what we actually do accept is, for instance, quotes. If you know you're doing someone's building a set and the contractor has given you a quote for the for the service for for all the materials and for their time building, they can send you that quote and that actually works for us. So it's not something you have to have already paid for. It's just something that you know you're going to be paying for. We also accept screenshots. So let's say you were going to be buying plane tickets, you could you know search for the flight you want and take a screenshot of the price, send that to us, and we can accept that as well. Um, so again, it doesn't have to be receipts. You don't have to have already spent the money. We just want to make sure we see what this money is being spent on. Um, and we actually need this documentation for our auditors when it comes time for our audit um, and our tax filing purposes. All right, so when you apply, as I mentioned a second ago about legal entity, right? So when you apply for fiscal sponsorship, we asked you to provide a legal entity or U.S. taxpayer ID. Now, this is either an individual with a social security number or um, someone who has a business and has applied for an EIN, the employer identification number. Um, but we work with all types of legal entities, so individual, sole proprietor, LLCs, corporations, anything of that sort. So we ask this because any of the funds that are dispersed through your fiscal sponsorship program to you is reported as income to that legal entity on file in the form of a grant. So we actually issue 1099s to the legal entity on file for all funds that were released within the calendar year. And this is specifically funds that were released to you. So not funds that are sitting in your fund balance with us. You wouldn't have to report that on your taxes or whoever the legal entity is wouldn't have to report that on their taxes. Only funds that have been released. So um, each January, this 1099 is sent out to individuals, partnerships, and LLCs showing the funds dispersed the previous calendar year as box three. Um, other or grant income to file on your taxes. Now, corporations are not actually issued 1099s, um, but they will still need to report uh, fractionalized income on their 990 when they file. So that being said, you don't necessarily have to pay income tax on fractured atlas fund releases. So we only release funds to you when you request it. So anything that's in your fund balance, um, you wouldn't have to report on. And it also means that you've actually spent the funds on project activities. So as long as you have um, good records of everything you spent it on, um, then you should be able to offset those costs and not owe any taxes. So we strongly recommend that you use an accountant to file and keep very careful documentation of your expenditures, maybe even soliciting the help of a bookkeeper. Excuse me, I'm sorry. just drink some water. So, an important thing to keep in mind is that your project is a separate business entity from Fractured Atlas. So just being fiscally sponsored doesn't make you become a 5133 organization um, and you aren't now a part of Fractured Atlas, um, Fractured Atlas's business um, activities. You actually get to um, do your own business activity and keep complete ownership of everything that you create, which is the great thing about our sponsorship program. We don't actually have any ownership over the work that you are producing. So the best part is that we do offer some of the benefits of our 501c3 status to you. Um, again, we can't offer you 501c3 status, only the IRS can do that. Um, but some of the greatest benefits um, we do offer to you. Um, to that extent, uh, we want to check in with you on a few things uh, while you're sponsored with us. Primarily the use of our tax ID. So it's very similar to your social security number. If a friend said, hey, could I just use your social security number? You kind of want to know what are you using my <laughs> number for? Or you'd be kind of weary about giving it out. So in that same way, anytime someone's asking for the EIN of your fiscal sponsor, we do ask you come to us first. So you can either say, send us an email at support at fractured.org, letting us know who is asking for it, why they're asking for it, um, and if there's any kind of application process or anything of that sort. Um, this way we can keep track of where our EIN is getting sent out to, um, and then we can also have it in your records uh, where you've been um, 
getting, giving out this information. Um, and again, we're happy to provide this information so it isn't something that you have to kind of jump through hoops for. We just ask that you send that email with that information and we will issue a letter to you uh, either with proof of sponsorship or anything of that sort. Um, yeah, so we can also help you obtain a letter for uh, nonprofit rates. So there's a lot of vendors out there that provide discounted rate for their services or for their space rentals or things like that for companies that can show that they have nonprofit status. So we do offer this to you. You would again send us an email um, to support at fractureatlas.org with the name and address um, and things like that. And then we could send that letter out to you, letting them know that you do qualify for nonprofit rates. Uh, I see someone did ask a question a little bit back. Uh, what about artist fees for documentation? That's a great question. So um, we can accept invoices from artists. So if, let's say, you have an actor, um, or, yeah, let's say you have an actor and they are doing a play for you, what we can accept is, one, either a contract or agreement from them. So if you have an agreement that they will be in five productions, receiving $500 in total that they sign, we can accept that agreement. Um, let's say that you have a set designer who is just you know, painting your set. They can actually invoice you for their time, uh, invoicing your project, and we can accept that invoice as well. And again, you don't have to have already paid them. Um, it's just showing us that documentation would work. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, going back to the nonprofit rates, the only thing that we actually cannot accept, um, I know that the U.S. Postal Service offers a nonprofit rate for bulk postage mailing. Unfortunately, that isn't something that we can offer because only the person, only the organization with the 501c3 status is allowed to take part in that tax exemption. So, unfortunately, we can't offer for bulk mailing, um, but we do offer it for many, many other things. Uh, all right, so the first major, excuse me, the final major fiscal sponsorship policy uh, to bring to your attention is our annual report. So for any fiscally sponsored project that either process donations or requested fund releases in a given calendar year, we do require that you submit an annual report updating us on your activities. Now, the report is due on April 1st every year, and we will send out three reminders throughout the year starting at the beginning of the year. Um, and if you do not complete that report by April 1st, we do freeze your project. But again, this is very simple to unfreeze. All you would have to do is submit the report, let us know that it's submitted, and then we would unfreeze your account. Um, so the way that you fill it out, it's all online. You go onto your My Fiscal Sponsorship page, click Info and Reports, and at the bottom you'll see File, and then the current year's annual report. Um, once you click on that, it'll take you to the online form here, and it will show already populated all of the fun releases you've made throughout the year. So you see the $3,095 that's been released, uh, um, that's, sorry, the $300 was released, and then you reported the $3,095. So the way that that um, differs right there is because we do ask that you report on all funds that you've received throughout the year or any expenditures that you've made. So even if you used your own funds or any funds outside of Fractured House, we ask that you report it here. Um, but it's not mandatory. You are only mandated to report the funds that have been released to you through Fractured Atlas. The reason we like to know a little bit more is we want to accurately see the impact that our projects are having out there in the artist world. So we would like to know exactly what uh, you have been doing and have a more accurate picture of your budget throughout the year. Um, and the other time, this thing that's great about this is that this is a chance for you to actually update us on anything. So if you did end up releasing $100 for transportation, but it ended up going towards dues and subscriptions, this is a place where you can make those changes and send us those updates. Um, it also has certain sections at the top. We let us know who's kind of experienced your work, who's it's, who it's served, what your plans are for the future coming year, um, and kind of some of the things you've accomplished. And you can make this as long or short as you like. So I'm going to open up for questions in a minute, and I hope you've gotten kind of a sense of how um, easy it is to kind of navigate our fiscal sponsorship 
program and how much is available for you specifically on our website and at your fingertips. Um, again, I would encourage you to explore that My Fiscal Sponsorship page um, and alongside with the program manual. And it is a more comprehensive overview of all of the policies and procedures that we have in place um, for our fiscal sponsorship program. So before I do open it up for questions, I kind of want to go into a little bit more of our other programs that we offer here at Fractured Atlas that you have access to while being members with us. We have um, Artfully. So Artfully is a ticket and patron tracking service offered to members of Fractured Atlas. The great thing about Artfully is that fiscally sponsored projects, donor information syncs automatically when you create an account with Artfully. So this allows you to track your donors, link your Artfully, your MailChimp, send out e-blasts, and sell tickets to your events, and track who's went to that event, who's also a donor, things like that. And it's a great resource for anyone who's, who's looking to um, keep track of those things and, and really um, follow up with their donors. So another thing we offer is um, Space Finder. So Space Finder is an amazing marketplace for you to search for space for your events, for even for personal use or anything like that. Um, it has customizable search for space, venues that have linked their calendars. You can see what space are available and the specific dates you need and even some venues that actually allow you to pay directly through our site for your space booking. Um, it's amazing, it's one of my favorite uh, services here. You can actually search for the size of space you need, for the type of work you're doing, um, all that. So it's, it's a really great resource to check out. Um, and then finally, we have our services of insurance. So our insurance program allows you to receive quotes and buy insurance for your artistic endeavors. You can insure your art, your people, and your events. Um, so it is not, it doesn't, you don't have to be a member at the dues paying level to um, get a quote for insurance, but if you did want to purchase that insurance, you would need to be either at the professional develop or professional or organizational level in order to purchase that quote. Um, yeah, so we have many, you know, different services that you can take part in, especially being fiscally sponsored. I do suggest taking part in all there is to offer here at Fractured Atlas. Um, just trying to give a shout out to some of the artists who provided these wonderful images you've been looking at um, and some of the photographs that uh, were part of this presentation. We want to thank those people for letting us use their work. Um, and again, I will go ahead and open it up for questions. So I see... One question, we only have to report if funds were released in the previous calendar. Yes, that's correct. You, um, you only have to report if they were released or if you received donations. If you only receive donations, it's a shortened annual report. It's kind of just an update on uh, your activities or anything like that. And what you can do is you can include any funds that you were used outside of Fractured Atlas in the report. Uh, but you're not necessarily required to fill in the budget section of the report once doing it. So we do ask you to fill out and submit a report. Um, but if you haven't released any funds, it's a shortened report and less is required. Is there a version of the standard text in the form of a letter or certificate that we can attach to our fundraising packet? Is there a way that by using that language, we can bypass needing to send each request for money in for approval? Um, okay, so that's a great question. We do need to see each request, but um, for instance, if you're putting together a fundraising packet, we would only need to see the fundraising packet. And as long as the standard text is in that packet, you're good. So we don't need to see every time, dear Bill, this letter, dear Sarah, this letter. As long as it's the same letter and the content has already been approved, you can make small tweaks in terms of catering it to the specific person that you're sending it to. We don't have to see it every single time. Um, we just need to see that one general letter that you'll be sending out to your donors to approve that. Um, now that's different when it comes to things like corporate sponsorship or sending out uh, letters of intent to different funders. When it comes to foundations and things like that, we need to see every single one because it's a different process um, when you are submitting to a funder rather than soliciting a donation from an individual. So I created a temporary physically sponsored project under the project name on Project Alice. Is a way after we are complete with the current project to transfer our account to an ongoing basis under our company name 
Or would we have to close that fiscally sponsored project and open a new one under the company name? FYI, I'll be using the same bank account. Um, so yes and no. So if you have a sponsored project that is temporary, um, but you would like it to be ongoing, what you can do, uh, and if it's it's actually changing, you want to do more broader um, activities, what you would need to do is fill out an expansion application. It's fairly simple. What you do, contact us, let us know that you want to change a few things with your project. You want it to be ongoing. You want to change the scope. Um, we will set your project to pending on our end. You will then log in and click apply for fiscal sponsorship once more. But what you'll see is your previously submitted application. In there, you can make any edits that you need to, turn it into an ongoing project, and submit it. We would get back to you within one to two weeks of approval, and then you could start fundraising for that new quote-unquote project. Um, it's more like updating that. If what you're saying you have two different projects and one is ongoing and the other one is temporary, unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to switch anything over. What you could do is you could, if you had like a fund balance, you could donate that fund balance to your new project so we could transfer those over um, so that, you know, you close out that old one and then the ongoing one is the one that continues. Um, so we can do that. Um, but yeah, if you have any kind of more detailed question about it, um, you can go ahead and send us an email and we can get a little more is specific about your specific situation there. Uh, if we were to be gifted a whole space, i.e. a building, would that be covered as an in-kind donation? Um, <laughs> technically, yes. Um, if someone were to give you like an entire building and of what the ownership is now yours, as in, you know, the entire deed or whichever is given to you, um, technically, yes, it would be extremely difficult because it's a very large donation. And one of the things that's important to mention is that all non-cash donations are actually seen as cash in your um, taxes. So it would be released to you as cash, um, and then you would need to report the value of that on your taxes. Um, and again, you would still be paying that 7%. So you'd be paying 7% of the value of an entire building <laughs> to Fractured Atlas for that donation. So I don't recommend it, um, but it, technically it, it is possible. Is there a minimum or maximum commitment to length of time that is required for a fiscal sponsor agreement? No, there isn't. Um, even if you did have, like, a, for instance, a temporary project that you applied for and was accepted, we don't close it as soon as that date that you said it ends. ends. It continues um, until you are ready to close it. So as long as you have um, active membership and active uh, fiscal sponsorship, you can be sponsored by us. Can we use the rental of a U-Haul truck to help transport our sculptures as an in-kind donation for a supporter? Unfortunately, no, because you do not now own that U-Haul truck. If U-Haul wanted to give you a truck and it's now yours, sure, you can have that be an in-kind donation. Um, but no, the rental of the U-Haul truck would be included on that. If someone's donating a sculpture to you, yes, that would be considered an in-kind donation. But the transportation with that U-Haul, unfortunately, uh, no, that would not cash. We applied under the name of one of the individuals in our collective who has since formed an LLC. Can we switch our tax information so that funds from the LLC rather than individual? Yes, you can switch the legal entity on file. What you would need to do is just send us an email at support at fractured.org, letting us know all the information. So the new legal entity, the new tax ID number, um, as well as who the new official authorized signer is um, because we would issue an amendment to the grant agreement to you that you would sign and then we would go ahead and update that legal entity for you. If you are you know, sponsored now and you're looking to do that, I would do that sooner rather than later because after December 21st, we can no longer change legal entities for this calendar year um, because we are kind of moving into the tax filing mode and any changes to legal entities would be quite hairy um, when that happens. So if you are looking to do that, I would do it now. <laughs> do gift certificates count as in-kind donation? Um, only if the organization or the place is in the business of giving gift certificates. So you can't, if your friend, you know, 
normally gives back massages and they're going to give you a receipt, a gift certificate for a back massage from them. Unfortunately, that would not count. <laughs> that would just be a fun kind of offering a service. But let's say you got a Target gift card as an in-kind donation. Yes, that's something that we could do. And again, it doesn't have to be like a large or a large uh, corporation if your friend, you know, owns a store themselves, they can give you a gift certificate. It's just as long as it's an actual gift certificate, not like your friend making one up. <laughs> Do you ever point funders to programs that the arts program itself didn't solicit? So someone that you know who wants to donate to say a cause you represent or as fractalis. Um, no, we actually kind of leave the relationship between the donor and the project to the project. Um, because it's a very sensitive um, relationship. Um, if donor was asking us, who should I give to? It would be quite tough for us to kind of make that distinction, especially since we like to keep things as fair as possible. Um, and we kind of ask them to look at our site and see what project they might be interested in donating to. What we do have is a grant toolkit that kind of does what you're saying, but not for individuals, it's for funders. Um, once you have met that $1,000 grant eligibility requirement, we can send a toolkit to you. What you can do is send us an email stating the genre of your project um, and then the geographic region of your project. We'll actually put together a toolkit that offers you all the tips and tools for finding funders, what it takes to apply for, apply for funders, um, and then also kind of what the application process looks like as well as a list of local and national um, grants that fit your project. So that is something that we, we do offer. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Um, if there aren't any other questions, um, again, you can feel free to um, take a look at the knowledge base on our site. If you go to fractured.atlas.org, click help, you can click knowledge base, and then you'll see all of our programs, which you can click on and find some kind of uh, information that you might have more questions about. And if you have um, any kind of more specific questions about your specific work, please feel free to email us at support at fracturedatlist.org and we will try to get back to you within a business day um, to try to help. Yes, thank you. Great. I'm, I'm so glad you guys were able to get something from this and please look out for an email from me um, with this recording in the email. Um, all right, everyone. And please and check out some of our other um, Webinars, I have a list up there um, that you can take a look at. They're also on our site. If you go to fractures.org, you see which ones we have coming up. And I highly recommend taking a look at some of the other um, awesome webinars that we have to offer. All right, everyone. Uh, you have a wonderful evening. <laughs>